Hi there, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Today, the day has come where we can finally compare who has the biggest biceps in our class. Today, we will talk about how we can um, measure raw EMG signal with the system that we have used um, for the ECG system already. And then in a later video, I'll explain you guys how you can actually analyze it, filter the data, and do some frequency analysis with the data collected with our microcontroller. So I will turn on my phone here and then let's talk about which things or which equipment that we need today for this um, tutorial so first of all like always we need our hoppala we need our redboard microcontroller then secondly we also need the emg board that we have used for the ecg lab already we need all the collect uh, connections that we will talk about in a minute um, obviously, we need to connect the microcontroller to our computer and we need some kind of like skin friendly tape um, to do some tension relief with the cables um, that lead to the EC or to the um, electrodes on our body. So as for, for connections, we have the exact same connections as we had in the ECG. So if you want to look more accurately of how we did this, just watch the ECG video on YouTube. But let's shortly go over it. So we have this cable that connects directly to the ECG board. And then we have three cables that need to connect here. So it's those kind of like jumper wires. And we have one black one that goes to the black cable, one that goes to the red cable, and one that goes to the yellow cable. In my case, I actually used the yellow for the yellow, the red for the red, and the black for the black, okay? And then at the microcontroller itself, we have the yellow going into A0. That's where we will read the analog um, number or like the analog in income, input, whatever. Um, then we have black in ground. And then we have red in 3.3 volts. That's what gives us the energy source. And obviously we also have the audio check in the um, EMG board, um, which then leads to our electrodes on our body. For this experiment today, we will use the biceps brachii. The reason for this is that this um, muscle is very isolated, meaning that there's not a lot of other muscles um, close by, which means that the chance for us to pick up electrical activity from a different muscle is very low. Um, so the biceps brachii is a very good muscle to try out EMG for the first time. We have, as we did with the ECG lab, three electrodes. One of them, same as in the ECG lab, is the reference electrode. This reference electrode needs to be on a part of the body with, which does not have a lot of electrical activity, so a very bony part. Um, I personally use the malleoles on my right ankle today. You can obviously also use the C7 in your neck or some other bony parts, but the C7 or the ankle usually work pretty well. And then the other two electrodes will go directly on the belly of the muscle. So if you look at my huge muscle here, which I haven't trained that much since COVID happened, um, we have one electrode um, at the belly and the other one is a little bit further away. So the idea here is that we wanna be in between the innervation zone of the muscle, which is usually somewhere in the center of the muscle, and then the connection between the tendon and the bone afterwards. And we'd want these two electrodes to be about two to four centimeters apart and in the line of the muscle. Also, as before, we use the black electrode for the reference electrode, meaning the one in my case on the ankle. And then we use the white one for the center electrode and the red connection for the one further away from the muscle center. Let me now share my screen and then we can actually start uploading the right file for this experiment. There is one thing that I forgot to mention, which is that again, as in the ECG lab, we need to do some tension relief here. So at the reference electrode on the ankle, as well as for those two electrodes, we want to take the cable and relieve the tension a little bit with a skin friendly tape. So that this part here is kind of loose and no matter how I move it, there will never be any tension or pressure on the electrodes. And now I'm actually gonna share my screen. And then we can talk about the code. So the first thing that we'll do is again, the same as in the ECG lab. We will go to file, examples, 
and open the analog read serial. Since again, we're just measuring some analog signal, we can use this um, to see first if our system is actually working. So if I connect my USB cable with the microcontroller here, and then I can just upload this file here. Hopefully that works. Yes, it does. If I open the serial monitor with 9,600 baud rate, um, data is flowing, but we can't really see a lot. So let's go to tools and serial plotter. And let's see what will go on here now. There we go. So that's my muscle. And if I'm now flexing the muscle, we can see how the data changes in the serial plotter. Here is one thing that's a little bit annoying, namely that the y-axis is always changing. It's not um, fixed. So it's, it's really hard to like X estimate sometimes how much of a change that actually was. Um, we didn't talk about this in the ECG lab, but I wanna show you like a, a short or small little trick that we can do here. So if we take, uh, where is it? There we go. Okay, so if we write here serial.print and then we just make a string here and this string will have a comma. And then let's just say now zero and 1023 for um, the bits and then serial.println that we have, um, that we go into the next line afterwards. And then we can delete the print ln here. I'm gonna show you what this will do. Let's upload it. <coughs> Sorry. And then if we look here, what this will do is the first value will be our um, muscle activity. And then the second value, the third value will always be the same. Which means that if we open the serial blotter, the serial plotter, it always tries to plot everything, right? So it plots on the one hand, it plots the maximum number. On the other hand, the lowest number, which is zero and 1023. And in the middle will be our muscle activity. But now our range is a little bit too big. So even if I like flex it now, you won't see a lot here. So we have to change the range here. We have to change the range to something around um, here, 300 to something probably like 400 or so. Let's just try 250 to 300. Let me see what I actually did in the lab manual that I don't do anything super different. We have 250 to, sorry, that was a mistake here, 400. If we upload that here now, and we check out the serial plotter now. There we go. If I flex now, we actually have some kind of like um, good axis. And if obviously for you guys, for anyone that goes way higher or way lower, um, you can obviously then just change this kind of like access to whatever you want, okay? Because it's still changing, but with those, at least it will always stay at least in between 250 and 400. Let's try it again. There we go. There is one more thing that I would like to discuss with you, which is different from the ECG lab. So if we have a look at the data here again, let's open the serial plotter here again and wait for a moment. If I flex my muscle, okay? And then I disconnect the microcontroller here, we can see that our data is somewhere between 300 and about 340, something like that, okay? So we have about, um, we have about 40 different values that we effectively gain here, which is not very good. If you remember that our microcontroller has a resolution of um, 10 bits, which means that we can get values between zero and 1023 those values will be between zero volt and five volt. So, but now we just have like 40 different values, which really, really decreases our resolution and which is like really not very good for our data. So what we want to do is we somehow, like in that case, we have a too big of a range. That's why we why, why the resolution is so smaller for us. So what we want to do is we want to change the range. So we don't want to be from zero to five volts, but there is a possibility that we can change this to like, a little bit less and I will show that to you guys now. So a microcontroller, how it works, it always has a reference voltage in our case of five volts. 
which is how I just explained, which means that we have, we, we measure between um, zero and five volts. But there is something called an analog, opala, that was wrong. There is something called an analog reference, which means that um, we change now these five volts to an analog voltage that we can um, put or input into the microcontroller. So if you look accurately here, you can see this AREF. And um, for the AREF, it means analog reference, which means that if we, for example, input here, let's say one volt, and we also say analog reference external here, um, that means then that the microcontroller would then measure um, between zero and one volt and have resolution still of 10 bits within this range. Unfortunately, we don't have something, uh, we don't have an external um, power source for us here. We just want to use our microcontroller, but what we have here is with the 3.3 volt. So we can actually reduce it to three point to a range of, of zero to 3.3 volt. So if we change the red cable or the, sorry, the red jumper wire from 3.3 uh, volt to five volts, and then we use another jumper wire, put it into 3.3 volt, and connect it to the AREF, okay? So as long as we have um, the analog reference as external here, we now measure values between zero and 3.3 volt and not up to five volts anymore, which works because we had um, values at around 300, which means that we weren't even over half yet. So we, we could even like go to 0 0.2.5 volts, but we just don't have the option here, okay? So if I connect this here, and I upload this code, it works. Upload this code, and then once it's done, open the serial plotter again. Oh yeah, have to wait until the spike is gone. So now we can see that the default isn't like before somewhere around 300 anymore. It's now actually somewhere around um, 450. So we even have to change um, those two values here. So that uh, the maximum and the minimum here. So we will change this to, let's say from 400 to 600 and upload this again. Okay, open serial plotter. There we go. Okay, so if I now flex my muscle, and disconnect the microcontroller. So if we now look, we have values, let's say of around 410 up to over 500. So now we effectively increase the resolution of, I think before we said 320 to 360, something like that. So I can remember we had like 40 different values. Now we have like about 80 to 100 different values. Obviously, that might be a little bit uh, less, a little bit more, but because we before we had a range from zero volt to five volt, and now we changed it from zero volt to 3.3 volt, we effectively increased the resolution at least a little bit. Let's now quickly have a look at um, code or lab three, code one. In lab three, code one, um, I already implemented this analog um, reference, this analog, ref analog reference external, which means that for you guys, the only difference to the ECG lab is that you guys just need to change the red one from the 3.3 volt to the five volts. And then you have the black one that you put from 3.3 to the AREF and that's it. In lab three, you can actually use lab three code one for all the um, experiments we will do. So here we have a sampling frequency of a thousand Hertz, which you can leave for all the experiments. We have a baud rate of 500,000 um, megabits per second, which you can also leave. And then the rest is basically what we had before in lab um, two for the ECG. We will not do anything with collecting data with the micro SD because we need very high sampling frequency. And this is just not possible with the micro SD because it can't lock the data as fast. So, and then what you basically need to do for this lab is the same as with the ECG, just with different experiments. So you can basically upload, upload the code here. And I think what you guys will do is like one experiment where you do a maximum voluntary contract contraction. 
So for the maximum voluntary contraction, um, it is really important that you have something where you can hold on with around like um, 90 degrees in your elbow, okay? So you can use a table or it, like that is maybe bolted into the, into the ground. Or if you don't have a table, you can also use a, hold on to a towel with both hands and put your foot in between the, like in the, into the towel and then you push with your foot and you just hold it isometrically with your hands as strong as possible, okay? And then what you wanna do is, um, you, we just uploaded the data, you open this here, change the baud rate to 500,000. Okay, then maybe clear output that you have clean data, clear output. And then um, you should not collect data for too long because data is flowing so fast. Unfortunately, there is some problem with the data flow, problems with the data flow and afterwards with the analysis. So it's sometimes not very clean with the sending anymore. And sometimes it um, doesn't send like for half a second for a second. The reason for this is um, that the, the communication with the USB drive is just not fast enough. And um, there will be some data that is that, that it just cannot be sent, which is a problem because we really need very clear data in that uh, in this experiment. So what I suggest you guys is when you, for example, when you do the MBC, which is holding, um, try to pull the table up with all the force possible for about five seconds. So if you want to pull it up for about five seconds, this whole experiment takes, let's say, about 10 seconds. You basically just turn on the serial monitor, clear the output, hold on, and then pull as, as hard as you can for about five seconds. And once the five seconds are over, stop it, um, disconnect the microcontroller, and then you can copy and paste the data into the text file like we did it before. And then you can just, um, once you have it copy and pasted, you can connect it here again and clear the output and do the same experiment again, okay? And you do that three times, disconnect it and so on. You'll do this with a maximum voluntary experiment. Then you'll have another experiment where we want to measure relative muscle activation. So you'll need three different um, weights and you will hold a light weight for about, I think, what did we say here? Let me see, about 10 seconds, um, copy and paste data, hold a medium weight for about 10 seconds, copy and paste data, and hold a heavy weight for about 10 seconds and copy and paste the data again. And then the third experiment will be a fatigue experiment, um, which means that you'll go back to either the table is bolted against the, or on the ground or the towel, and you'll do basically a maximum voluntary experiment again, but now for 10 seconds. So you really go 100% for 10 seconds that you'll feel the fatigue um, in the end. And we'll do this because we then wanna do some frequency analysis for, for, um, for this experiment and wanna see how um, the distribution of fast twitch and slow twitch fibers will be over time. So we would hope that in the beginning, um, the fast twitch fibers are firing more and faster, but then by the end, because the muscle is getting fatigued, um, the fast twitch fibers are getting less and the slow twitch fibers are more, uh, let's say, superior in the end of this experiment. I hope this tutorial helped you guys um, set up the microcontroller and the code to analyze the data. I hope that you could understand why we're trying to increase the resolution, and how we increase the resolution here. And I'm not gonna show you how the experiments work. I have explained it in the lab manual, um, but don't forget, uh, never collect more data than about 15, 20 seconds, then copy and paste it. And if you have any questions, please let me know, leave any feedback in the comments and I'm looking forward for the next tutorials. Take care, bye-bye.